So, you've been looking for a new couch, and it's been kinda hard. Some of them are too big, some of them are too small, and some of them are too hot. That's right, some of them are on fire. Hot couches. Hate to see it. Hey guys, I'm Bethesda by Kai. I'm Kai and Tara back once again taking a look at how to uh, vectorize an image in Inkscape. I've gotten comments many times before about how to vectorize an image um, or make it so that it's usable as a logo rather rather than vectorize. People ask me all the time, how do I make this image something that I can use as a logo and have it be different sizes and not get blurry? So essentially that's what we're doing today. We're making any logo that you have not blurry. So the basis is we need to just recreate the logo in a um, vectorizing program. So Inkscape is one of those things. So Inkscape is a program where you can go ahead and make everything nice and clear at any resolution. You can scale to whatever size you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the Harry Potter logo a vector today because I just clicked and dragged that image into the Inkscape thing. Now, if we scroll in by holding down control and then scrolling our mouse wheel, you can see that if we zoom in, it gets blurry. That's because this is a PNG. So we, we imported the PNG, which is an image file. And the bigger you scale it, the more blurry it gets. And long story short, with vectors, vectors don't do that. Vectors will be 100% crisp and clear no matter what size you make it forever. That's why they're cool. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to the bottom right here and turn the opacity down um, quite a bit. Now, if you don't have this thing that says opacity down here, you don't have fill and stroke. To fix that, I believe you go up to one of these up here, right? Object and then fill and stroke, boom. And then it'll put this tab over here on the right-hand side or wherever it puts it. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead. And what I want to do is we're going to go ahead and do some nice vector work. So we're going to just click in some points here like this. We're using the um, this tool right here, which is the, uh, Bezier's the Bezier's Curve tool. So we're just clicking. I'm just clicking some things in. I'm not clicking and dragging anything. We're just clicking, just clicking in some shapes here. Nothing crazy. I'm going to actually go over here all the way across and then go there and then just go up, zoom in, not all the way. And then we're just connected back up together, just like uh, like uh, like that. There we go. So now when we click those together, it'll create a whole line, a whole thing. And what we need to do is maybe I don't want these lines to be fully straight. So let's go ahead and grab this tool right here, which is like the edit nodes path tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and move these around like this, make them a little make them a little slanted inwards like that, you know, and do some some cool cleaning up like this. You know, just a little bit of, 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 of motion to this or whatever you want to call it. Not motion, but you know what I mean? A little bit of a uh, little bit of shape to this. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. There we go. So we did that. Now we need to go ahead and do the same thing with all the other portions of the words or the name Harry Potter. So the same thing here, all the way across. And then we're going to go all the way over to about here and then up to, eh, we'll go up to here and we'll end it there. That's fine. And then we'll do the same thing here. Um, just to get it inside of this this second part of the H, so you can't tell once we finish it here and then here. So essentially what we're doing is we're trying to get the big shape down. Um, and then after that, oh, I missed. That's unfortunate. If you missed, just try and get it as close as possible until it turns green. It's kind of hard to see sometimes, actually. So there we go. It's kind of tedious to get that on the, on the exact spot sometimes, but it's all right. All right. So we just move this around like this using all of these tools that we have at our disposal. There we go like that and then we'll raise this up pull that like that and then you can see it makes that nice little sharp tip there which is what we need um and if you keep playing around with it it'll, it'll it'll get there there we go nice cool um i want this to be a little bit more rounded on the end so let's go ahead and grab this piece right here and see if we can maybe manipulate it so that it's a little rounder there we go there we go looks good there we go nice 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 sweet move that around Oop, move this little anchor piece around so i like that there we go that's fine um, and then we don't have to worry about these sharp edges because it's going to be inside of the H. And then we'll just move this down to where it goes and this down to where it goes. And then we're good to go. So now I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and what we're going to do is I'm going to go and fill these in. now. So we have two pieces here. What we need to do is select the first one. And we're going to go to this place where it says fill and fill and uh, fill and stroke paint and stuff like that. We're going to go to stroke paint and we're going to turn, turn it off. It's a little X. So it gets rid of that. We're going to go to fill and then hit this little button right here, which is a solid like fill color solid. There we go. So now it's filled in, obviously. Same thing with this. Go to stroke paint, turn it off, go to fill, turn it on. There we go. So that's how you do that. Now, the cool thing about this is, is that when I said when we zoom in, you can see it's crisp, crisp, so crisp and so clear still, even when we zoom in. When if you remember, 
this one looks like this. It's like a blurred line. It's like, you can't even tell what that is. It's like a gradient. It looks like a gradient at this point because you can't tell what it is anymore. But yeah, so that's essentially the process that I would do for the entire rest of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the rest of this and then I'll be back much later on because it's going to take quite a while, but I'll do it just for the tutorial because why not? Um, but yeah, so we'll, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do all of these and I shall be back. I'm going to round these and stuff and I'll show you guys um, once, uh, once we get back. But yeah, that's going to be it. Literally it. So um, I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, I'm, I've am i finished the whole thing, but there's three issues that we have. The P, the O, and the E, Po, Edgar Allen to be exact. They don't have holes in them, so we need to fix that real quick. So let's go ahead, let's, let's drop the opacity down of the P and the O and the E here real quick. And what we, can, what we need to see here is, is, what we need to do here is we can see we have these couple holes here. Now this is super easy to fix. Let's go ahead and just create a shape. I'm going to make this a color so we can see it a little bit easier. Just click the color down here. Um, we're going to go ahead and create this little shape inside of the p here and i'm just clicking and dragging here um instead of just clicking clicking and dragging kind of making them arc as i go along um okay there we go now so what we're gonna do is uh that color didn't work because i forgot you're supposed to do it afterwards but anyway you can see we have this piece right here now what do we, we need to do is we need to go ahead and hold down shift select the p and then go up here to uh, path and then choose difference. And you can see it cuts that right out. It, it just cuts that piece right out, which is what we need. This, this it made this red. Nice coat. Okay, let's fix that. Now you can see we need to do all these other pieces super quick, super easy. Um, as you can see, let's go ahead and just link those up. Hold down shift, grab the P uh, object. I'm sorry, path, difference, boom, that piece is cut out. Same thing with the O. I'll do these on camera real quick so you guys can see what the haps is just real quick all right i missed i missed again okay i missed again all right that's lovely for me okay this hates me you can also hit enter by the way if you if you needed to hit enter you hit enter and it also closes it up but sometimes depending on um how far away the last point was it kind of makes it so that it is um a little sharp so it's not always the best option but hey listen if you can't get it to go then that is the next best thing you know so let's go ahead and just Link these up, and then we'll have to do the E, and that's it. Path, difference, boom. And then finally, uh, the long-awaited, much-awaited, much-anticipated much film of the summer, the newest blockbuster, the letter E. Okay, and hit enter, and it'll fill it in. But you can see it kind of messes it up, but that's okay, because when we use the fill tool, it fills it in properly, but you see it's kind of sharp there. So maybe you can go in and just select this piece right here, hit delete on that, and then it fixes it nice nice up. There we go. So that's that. But you can see I can't use this anchor point right here. So it kind of makes things weird a little bit. So that's why it's not usually the best to try and do that. And I really just want to get it to connect. So let's do it one more time. But that's just, I wanted to show you guys that. So I really need to get this to connect here. All right. There we go. Nice. And we can just pull this out. Nope nope that's not what i want we'll grab both of those oh i'm having such a hard time okay there we go nice pull that over and then we'll do that and then hold down shift select both of them path difference and then we can turn the opacity back up there we go and then on these as well perfect so that is the harry potter logo each one of these letters is movable what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and grab the grab the image underneath <laughs> if i could grab it there we go we'll grab the image underneath like that hit delete get rid of it now it's gone um that's good so now we have the harry potter logo we can scale it up oh, we can select all these letters scale them up hold down control scale them up they're still massively clear nothing wrong with that that's a completely sharp line we can scale them down massively clear still as well and then uh and then that's that yeah you can export this do stuff with it you can move the letters around do different things make them a color by selecting them all making them a color that classic harry potter yellow this still has the stroke paint on it. There we go. Um, but yeah, so that's literally all you got to do to make some nice, clear, crisp vector logo images off of the logo that you already have. Hope you guys learned something new today. Um, I'll see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.